TV has come a long way in its portrayal of same-sex relationships. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 gay male couples on television. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking through the history of television for relationships that consist of two men. Since we'll be talking about various plot points, we're going to have to issue a spoiler warning. Number 10. Riley Stavros and Zane Park. Degrassi, The Next Generation. What are you doing tomorrow night? You want to catch a game with me? Just try to stop me. Degrassi's had no shortage of gay characters, but Riley and Zane's romance manages to stand apart from the rest. When they meet, Zane is a confident out and proud athlete and head of Degrassi's LGBT club. Nice pants. Like them? Oh, they're fabulous. Meanwhile, Riley is also an athlete but is still in the closet and is harboring some homophobic tendencies. This conflict creates tension in their relationship, but they come to understand each other and Zane ultimately helps Riley come out. When you beat up a homophobe, it only makes them more homophobic. It's touching to see two young gay characters who manage to defy stereotypes and come into their identities despite the social pressures of high school. So that means... That means you got some date planning to do. Number 9. Renly Baratheon and Loras Tyrell. Game of Thrones. You sure this won't hurt? Only if I slip. As Cersei could tell you, clandestine relationships in Westeros are never quite as secret as the lovers may hope. Renly Baratheon and the Knight of the Flowers carried on a secret relationship. Despite Renly's engagement to Loras' sister, who had her own ambitions in mind. Do you want my brother to come in and help? Renly's attempt to take the Iron Throne ended tragically as he was killed on his brother Stannis' orders. <laughs> because he expressed his grief with a quote that doesn't appear in the TV adaptation, when the sun has set, no candle can replace it, some book fans expressed disappointment that Loras would later move on to be with another man. I don't know you. Oliver, would it please you? Number 8. Raymond Ray Jacob Holt and Kevin Cosner. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Ah, detectives. Meet my husband, Kevin. Hey. Nice to meet you. The straight-laced Captain Ray Holt found love in the equally stone-faced Kevin Cosner. No, no, not Cosner. Kevin isn't particularly fond of the Nine-Nine, mostly due to the racism and homophobia Ray has faced in his career. But he supports him anyway. And I can't imagine it's been fun watching the man you love marginalized, underappreciated, and disrespected by the NYPD. The fact that these two characters are gay is never really made a big deal in the series, which is a refreshing portrayal, particularly in comedy. Mm, yes, I dread those enunciated denunciations. Yeah, I hate those denunciations. The verses of seeing vulnerability in the seemingly unshakable Ray provides the show with some rare moments of poignancy amidst all the silliness. However, this doesn't mean that the couple doesn't get their share of laughs. Oh. So, may I pour you some of this wine drink you brought us? Perhaps all of it? Number 7. Danny and Ethan, Teen Wolf Werewolf twin brothers Ethan and Aiden transfer to Beacon Hills High School in order to get close to Scott. This led to Ethan beginning a relationship with resident sweetheart Danny. This is Though he begins as an antagonist, his genuine feelings for Danny begin to make his allegiances waver, and he ultimately defects and joins Scott's pack. Oh God, is this about to get really violent? Probably. Their romance was one of the anchoring storylines of the drama's third season, and finally provided fan favorite Danny with a legitimate and sincere love interest. Not only that, but Ethan's journey from villain to hero made him one of the most dynamic recurring characters on the series. Despite taking place in a supernatural series, these characters were two of the most human, and we love them for it. I like you. A lot. Number 6. David Fisher and Keith Charles, Six Feet Under. You want me to cry on your shoulder? Fine. My mother just confessed she was having an affair. Alan Ball's HBO series Six Feet Under received much praise for its portrayal of David and Keith's relationship. Both characters are relatable, realistic, and grounded with their romance being one of the main storylines of the series. Keith helps David accept his sexuality and finally come out, and the two are able to lean on each other amidst issues with their dysfunctional families. When we met, you were a controlling homophobe. Their love for each other is almost frighteningly intense, and they seem to experience the highest highs and the lowest lows. You are such an asshole! 
Nonetheless, their passion is evident every time they appear on screen together. And despite these two large personalities often conflicting, there was never any doubt that they were right for each other. Number 5. Connor Walsh and Oliver Hampton – How to Get Away with Murder Where were you? I went for a walk in the park. At the outset of this thriller series, Connor seemed like he would just be fulfilling the stereotype of the promiscuous gay man. I work in the bank across the street, and the only hot guys that ever come in here are from your agency. However, after a brief fling with hacker Oliver, his rough exterior begins to soften. Stanford, I want you to come with me. Very often, Oliver's sweet nature is at odds with Connor's coldness, but they manage to even each other out, always looking out for one another. Just as complicated and messy as any straight relationship on the series, it tackles the major issue of HIV while never tokenizing either of the characters, and giving each of them something to turn to in the dark world they live in. We're the best relationship that I know. Number 4. Ian Gallagher and Mickey Milkovich – Shameless This may be one of the most toxic relationships on this list, but an effective one nonetheless. I want the gun back, Mickey. Gallagher? The gun! All right. Both Ian and Mickey grew up in poverty, with Mickey in particular being raised in an angry and violent family. Your dad is an evil, psychotic prick. You're just gonna let him ruin your life? They begin as enemies before an altercation reveals their attraction to one another. After several seasons of major dysfunction, Mickey finally announces his sexuality in one of TV's most radical coming out scenes. I just want everybody here to know I'm f***ing gay. He later becomes critical in helping Ian deal with his bipolar disorder. The messiness of the relationship serves as a refreshingly different gay coming-of-age story. And it's safe to say we've never seen a gay relationship on TV quite like this one. This one, right? If we're a couple or not. Of course we are. Number 3. Justin Taylor and Brian Kinney – Queer as Folk <music> Eyebrows were raised when the premiere of the Showtime series featured protagonist Brian hooking up with Justin, a minor. It was certainly a dysfunctional way to begin the relationship, but as the series progressed, Brian's feelings for Justin became more genuine. Who's that guy you drew? Though the relationship becomes contentious on more than a few occasions, their love for one another manages to shine through. And they rectify things when times get tough. Even when the two aren't together, it's clear that they care deeply for one another. It was one of the first gay relationship arcs to anchor an entire series, and is both unique and beautiful. Number 2. Kurt Hummel and Blaine – Glee and, and that is why I love you so much. <laughs> Viewers swooned when Blaine debuted with his a cappella version of Teenage Dream. But no one fell harder than Kurt. Before you met me, I was alright, but things were kinda heavy. You brought me to life. Though they started out in rival glee clubs, Blaine eventually comes to McKinley High to be closer to his love. And the two provide some of the show's loveliest duets. As high school sweethearts, there was surely some drama that would ensue over the course of the series. But even long distance and infidelity couldn't keep the two apart. I need you to sign one of those non-cheating contracts. You can get one on Oprah's website. They were a fan-favorite couple throughout the series, and they helped one another grow from teens to adults, finally achieving their dreams and supporting the next generation of Gleeks. Will you marry me? Yeah. Yeah. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey. Why are you gonna be so nasty? Number 1. Cameron Cam Tucker and Mitchell Mitch Pritchett – Modern Family Beautiful, Gloria, just like my Mitchell. Oh, 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 whoa, oh. In a series full of hilarious characters and sincere moments, Cam and Mitchell stand out as two of the most lovable figures. We would like to pay for everyone's headsets. At the series onset, they begin their own family by adopting Lily, and adding even more chaos to the already chaotic Pritchett family. And, uh, 
The High Strung Mitchell is a perfect foil to his partner Cam, who has a certain flair for the dramatic. Eric Stone Street and Jesse Tyler Ferguson have fantastic chemistry both comically and romantically, with both receiving Emmy nominations for their performances. They're more than just sources of comedy, however, as they're television's most prominent portrayal of gay parents, who keep us laughing every step of the way. Cameron, do you take Mitchell to be your husband? I do. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.